My name is Mike Shannon. I'm the putting instructor at the PGA Tour Performance Center at the TPC Sawgrass in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. And I want to help you with your putting. And I'm going to ask you one question. There's only one correct answer. That question is, what is it going to take to make you a great putter? The answer is, you have to make more putts. Simple as that. So often, people go out to the putting green and they practice their stroke. So when they get on the golf course, they're so used to practicing their stroke, they really don't have a concept of what it takes to make the putt. So I want to show you a new practice program that I want you to implement today so that you can become a great putter. Now, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to start at four feet. I want you to use a ball that's got some lines on it, and I want you to line the ball up to your target, set the putter in behind the ball, and then what I'm looking for is one thing. I want to see the ball turn end over end. Okay. If I can see the ball turn end over end, I know two things are happening. Number one, I know that my putter face is square. If my putter face is open or closed, I'm not going to get that roll. Two, the putter path is correct. If my putter is traveling out to end or too much end to out, I'm going to get a side spin as this ball comes off the putter. So we want to see this ball turn end over end. When you can see that, you know that your mechanics are in a good spot. So often we miss a putt on the golf course, we blame ourselves for making a bad stroke, when in fact it wasn't a bad stroke at all. Now once you hit a couple of putts from four feet, you've got the good roll, I want you to drop back to eight feet and do the same thing. By going from four feet to eight feet, now our stroke gets a little bit longer. There's more of a chance that this putter might get offline. So we're gonna to try to roll this ball end over end. We'll set up and then make the stroke. Okay, and you can see that ball's turning end over end. So my mechanics are good from four feet. They're also good from eight feet. So now it's time to start practicing making these birdie putts. Birdie putts occur mostly from 10 to 20 feet. So I want you to start out, get a putt somewhere between 10 and 20 feet. I want you to read the break of the putt. I want you to set the lines of the ball down where you see the break. Now, at that point, you've done two things. You've read the break and you've put the ball down, both of which are very visual. When you come in and you set that putter behind the ball and you get your body set up and the putter aligned to the lines on the ball, when you look out at the cup, your instinct is going to start to kick in. And it's going to tell you you're playing too much break. It might tell you you're not playing enough break. Or it might say, boy, this looks really good. I think we're going to make it. So I want you to listen to your instinct. If you ever have a conflict between vision and instinct, always go with your instinct. Your instinct will not let you down. You really can't trust your sight. So we're going to set up. We set the ball behind the, uh, the putter behind the ball and we get lined up. Now my instinct is telling me that we're pretty good right here. So I'm going to make my stroke, turn the ball over. You can see the ball turning over really well, but the ball missed. So if you miss, here's what I want you to do. Very important. Number one, I want you to ask yourself, did that ball turn over as I expected it to? It's either yes or no. And that ball did which means that I made a good stroke. Two, was my speed good? Yeah, my ball got to the hole, so my speed was good. Three, did I read it correctly? And the answer there is no. I didn't read enough break. 
Now, what you're going to find by asking yourself these three questions is that over a period of a week or two weeks, you're going to start to see patterns occur. And these patterns are going to help you pinpoint the part of your putting game that needs the work the most in order for you to make these putts. So the next putt, I'm going to add just a little bit more break to this putt. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to set up. I'm going to look out there and then I'm going to make the stroke. And again, the ball dropped underneath. So I've, I've made two putts. Both putts were under red. So that would be something that I would be really, uh, that I think is important because I need to read more break into my putts. Now, after you've done a couple of right to left putts, I want you to do some left to right putts. I've never seen a tour player yet who has a perfect read right to left and left to right. The reason for that is on a right to left breaking putt, your right eye is on the high side of the putt. On a left to right breaking putt, your left eye is on the high side of the putt. So when you go from one side of the cup to the other, your eyes literally switch places, which means you're not going to see it the same way. Now, you're going to be much better on one side of the cup than you are the other. And this is also a pattern that you're looking for. If you know you're better on a right to left breaking putt and your ball is laying off the green, you know if you can chip it into this area that's going to give you a right to left breaking putt, you've got a better chance of making that putt. If you chip it into an area where you're going to have a left to right putt, doesn't mean you can't make it, but it means you're going to have to work harder. So play into your strength can actually take away a shot to a shot and a half around. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move over and we're going to give ourselves a left to right breaking putt. We're going to read it. We're going to set the ball down. We're going to come in. We're going to do just the same thing. We're going to roll the ball and see if we can turn it end over end. So once I'm set up and ready, all I'm looking for is this ball to turn end over end. And you can see that ball is really rolling well, but we missed. So going back to the questions, did the ball turn over the way I wanted it to? Yes, it did. Two, was my speed good? Yes. And then three, how was my read? Well, I overread it. So I'm adjusted this ball. We're going to set up again. And we're just going to try to turn this ball over, end over end. Now that time we adjusted too much, so I missed low. But you can see that on right to left and left to right, the issue that is starting to become a pattern for me is reading the putt correctly. Now what I want to do is give you some drills in all three of these questions so that you can start to make more of your putts. So let's say we've practiced for a couple of weeks and we're looking for our patterns and our big pattern seems to be difficulty in turning the ball end over end. Okay? One of the things that I like to use is a T3 putting arc. It's small enough to fit in your golf bag. You take it out to the putting green, line it up, put some tees down to hold it in place, and then just practice and keep your putter contacted with the putting arc. If you do, you can see how well that ball turns over. Okay, You can have a bad path with this, and this will help you focus a little bit more on your face angle at impact. And you can see just really good rolls there. So some work with the T3 putting arc is going to be a really good way to get you to turn that ball end over end. Your pattern tells you that the reason you miss putts is that you're inconsistent with your speed or you're leaving a lot of your putts short or long. So what you want to do is you want to go into your phone you want to download a metronome 
and you want to set that metronome at 76 beats per minute. 90% of all the players on the PGA Tour have a combined tempo and rhythm between 72 and 80 beats a minute, but 90% of those players have 76 as their combined tempo and rhythm. I want you to set your metronome at 76. Using that metronome, all I want you to do is putt. Now it's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. So you can see that by using a metronome, I'm better able to control my speed and my distance. Now, people ask me, is it the same for every putt? And it is, okay? If you have a 50-foot putt, your putting stroke is longer and faster. One, two, one, two. If it's a three-foot putt, your stroke is shorter and slower. One, two, one, two. But the time element of both strokes are exactly the same. And when your time element becomes consistent, you develop feel. And that is going to help you control the speed and the distance of your putts. If your patterns dictate that a majority of your misses are due to misreading, well, we need to practice our, our reads. The first thing I want you to do, go out, get about a 10-foot putt. I want you to read the putt, and I want you to put a T down where you see the break. Then take a string. Run that string over the top of the ball and over the top of your tee. Now, I want you to set up and I want you to roll the ball right down this string. Now, you can see right there that I underread the break of the putt, but I'm not going to let one putt dictate to me, so I'm going to do it again just to be sure, and I'm going to roll this ball right down the string, and again, I missed low. So it's pretty obvious here, I have misread this putt. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up, just the string, and I'm going to take it to a point that I estimated what the misread was, but I'm not going to move the T because that's my original read. Now we're going to go back to the start. We're going to put a ball under the string, and then we're just going to put it again right down the string. Now, that ball went in, so that is the real break of this putt. Now, what we want to do when we're through, when we find the real break here, look at the distance from the center of the cup to the real reed. Then look from the center of the cup to your first reed, and that is the percentage that you were off on your reed, okay? Now, when you go to the golf course, you can't change what you see. It's going to be the same, but you can add to or take away from, depending on what this test tells you. I also want you to do it on the other side of the cup. Let's do a right to left breaking putt. Same thing. Read it. Put the tee in the ground. Put the string up. Putt. Move the string until the ball is going into the cup, and then look at the percentage that your read was off. It might not be the same as it was on a left or right, but you'll know as you go to the golf course that maybe I have to add break on one side and take break away on the other side, and I know what my percentages are. That is a huge tool to getting you to make more putts on the golf course. And as you start to make more putts, you're going to become a great putter.